Alrighty, I am testing this, um, what do you call it, check valve. Uh, it's a three inch check valve, ABS check valve, uh, attached to right now a three inch uh, ABS pipe, 10 feet long, full of water. And this is my third test. But first let's talk about this check valve. Uh, this is about this is about $28 on Amazon, came in one day. Um, you can also find them locally for around where I am for like $35 or so. Uh, anyways, a, uh, a swing check valve for a pond. And why would you install a swing check valve for a pond? Uh, I'm installing an external pump. There it is. The inlet on this pump is going to be above water level. That means... Uh, and a pump like this, obviously if it's out of the water, if it's above water level, it, it needs to be primed. That means that the suction line needs to be full of water when you turn it on, or it won't work. So the way you do that is by installing a check valve at the bottom of your intake so that you can fill the line with water and it will, the check valve will hold the water uh, so that you can turn the pump on and it will, it'll stay primed. Oh, and if you know your way around pumps, uh, and ponds, you might ask, why not? Uh, why not just put the pump so that the why not bury the pump, you know, below grade so that the uh, intake line is uh, below water level? Well, that would be a great idea, and I would love to do that. However, uh, I am drawing from this cistern, and that cistern has a fluctuating water level, and it is about four feet deep which means that in order to install this pump uh, in a situation you know in a uh, in a way where it would always be primed by uh, water in the cistern I would have to bury that in a in a pit four feet deep which is uh, not really practical I mean you could do it but then at that point like why well, I just get a submersible pump I just get a submersible pump and put it in the cistern instead of bearing it four feet out of it and then doing like you know doing a bulkhead fitting through your liner uh, four feet down that just is a disaster waiting to happen in my opinion um, a swing check valve uh, on pond sites and basically anywhere I can find one uh, that I believe are non serviceable are like 75 or 80 dollars or something like I said this one was 28 dollars came in one day on Amazon uh, it's made by Conplast. The thing is, is this is made for sewage, okay? Uh, it's made for a sewage line. And if you read the FAQs like on Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever it's sold, you know, a lot of people ask, can you install it vertically? And you know, the answer is always, no, this will not work vertically. And that is correct for a sewage application where water is running downhill uh, and it needs to be installed. You know, the flapper is in, let's see if I can, the flapper is in here. And when the, uh, if this were horizontal, you know, it would be opening. It's got an arrow on it. There, let me see if you can see it. It's got an arrow on it. it says water goes this way. <laughs> um, in, a, in, a, in a sewage uh, situation, this, uh, this side, you know, the down water side of the, of the valve would be at a lower elevation than this side, which means that if you installed it, uh, if you installed it horizontally, I meant to say vertically, right? If you flipped it horizontally, that valve would always be, uh, the valve would always be swinging open and there'd be, it wouldn't have the pressure, you know, there, uh, it would, it just wouldn't work. But because this is, I'm installing on the suction side of a, of a, uh, of a pump or <laughs> of a pump, I can install it vertically and it's actually working really well and like I said this is my third test and there's there's the tiniest little drip going on down there uh, at the bottom of the I'm talking about here, right here where I think it's just the tiniest little bit dripping through there's also a little bit I guess it's dried up I spilled some out the top of the pipe but I also because this is serviceable you know this is screw tight and it's got a seal in it um, it has a slow drip to it and I'm not sure uh, if I'm doing something wrong, but I've tried hand, you know, it says hand tighten only. Uh, 
I finally got it to where it's basically only losing a drop. I've got a timer going for an hour to see how much uh, how much water it loses in an hour. But so far it's working pretty well. You know, I don't think you can expect a check valve to block 100% of the flow forever. Uh, it's really just for emergency situations where you know you lose power, your pump shuts off, and it buys you uh, quite a bit of time to go close a valve or something to like really shut off the flow of water, so it doesn't, so things don't back up. In my situation, anyways, you probably wouldn't have a valve on your sewage line if you're using this for an actual sewage situation. Anyways, this is gonna work, I think, and it is, like I said, uh, I'm able to get it locally. I could never get like an actual swing check valve. Um, anywhere, I mean, maybe there's some like some, some plumbing supply stores that are you know contractor only, like Ferguson or something, where I could go and pay like $150 or something for you know walk-in dummy prices, like for people like me, and just hey, sell me a swing uh, check valve. But anyways, for for 30 bucks, I think I've solved my problem. All right, my test is complete. I filled this 10 foot piece of 30 inch PVC to the brim with water and pretty much held. Uh, I calculated that it lost two hundredths of a gallon over the course of an hour and you can see now it's actually dripping quite a bit less. It's kind of, it seems like the seals have essentially self-healed uh, after an hour or so. I mean it's not perfect, it's still dripping, you can see it's still dripping. Um, and I don't know if, uh, I don't know how that, if you can extrapolate that out to like, you know, days, weeks, months or something. I know people complain about check valves and stuff like this because eventually they fail and then run into issues. But I'm going to call that, I mean, for my purposes, good enough.